Welcome back to Worldview. Now, our conversation yesterday with the author Joe Muto, he wrote the book An Atheist in the Foxhole, a liberal's eight-year odyssey inside the heart of the right-wing media, went on a bit longer than we would have uh, normally put in a single segment. I want to take now some of the bits and clips from other questions that were asked of Joe to give you more of an insight into the inner workings of Fox News. Here now is Joe Muto again. You say there are two Ann Coulters, the polite to all in the green room version, and then the on-screen fire breather. And you're also quite laudatory of Karl Rove because you spent a lot of time with him in pre-interview situations. But then you also nailed them for going off the rails in the 2012 election. Why is there this dichotomy with Ann, and why did someone as disciplined as Karl implode? Um, well, <laughs> Ann Coulter, I think, is might be an actual genius <laughs> in that she knows that if she goes on air and says vile, disgusting things, then she's going to sell more books. And then that's not her at all in the green room. She's chatty. She's funny. She's, you know, she's polite. She's, she's almost mild mannered. <laughs> I mean, even Bill Maher likes her. Yeah, they, they, they get along. They get along. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's marketing and, and, and she knows she has a role to play and that that's sort of her character, you know, uh, She's almost like Stephen Colbert in that way, in that she, she plays a character on television. Um, now, Carl, in Karl Rove's case, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what happened with him. That election night thing was fascinating to me. And it, made for, it did make for very good television uh, when he broke down there. Um, part of that may have been an act. That could have been him doing, putting, it on, uh, you know, putting something on for the cameras. And part of that may have been just he had deluded himself into thinking that, you know, Romney was a surefire win and, uh, you know, and Rove had by that point, I think, taken $300 million in donations from conservatives for his, his super PAC. So it could have been him, you know, envisioning the, the phone calls he was going to get the next day from angry donors. So maybe that was sort of contributed to his little mental breakdown there. One of your um, early experiences, and it was one that had me hysterically laughing and got my wife very irritated because she was trying to sleep was the meatloaf story. Oh God. Please tell the meatloaf story. <laughs> the story goes like this. And this was told to me as like a, a boogeyman story when I first started doing videotape uh, as a production assistant. Uh, basically what happened is the singer meatloaf got sick uh, on concert, you know, he was on a concert tour, he got sick, he broke his leg, something like that. So that's a, that's a little story on the, on the news update. And uh, the producer puts a little line in the, we, we have a thing called a rundown, it's like a spreadsheet that just lists every story. So the producer put a line in, in, the, uh, in the rundown that says, video, meatloaf, all right, fine. Normal stuff, fine, video of meatloaf, the singer, singing on stage, whatever. All right, production assistant, <laughs> Who was, who was, I think was kind of new, um, <laughs> sees this in the thing, you know, all right, fine, cuts the, cuts the tape, goes the editor, cuts the tape, puts the tape in the deck, you know, everything's fine. 20 minutes later, video gets played, news anchor starts reading, oh, the singer Meatloaf uh, was hospitalized in Germany today. Director rolls the video, video starts playing on the screen, it's Meatloaf, the food. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> It's a late, it's a mom sitting at a dinner table carving meatloaf, you know, out serving it to her family, and the director's in the control room, and everyone in the control room is absolutely losing it. Director's laughing. He says, "I'm not cutting away from this. This is too funny." <laughs> so they left it, you know, they left it on air. So the, the news anchor did this entire 20 second read with this video talking about the singer meatloaf while video of the food meatloaf is playing on screen. So this was, I mean, this 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 was an incident that sort of got passed down like an oral history of, of the network from production assistant to production assistant. Basically, basically, you know, watch yourself. Don't, don't make a screw up like that. But as it, as it turns out, it, it's funny you mentioned that because a few, um, a few days ago, someone, someone who works at Fox, actually still works at Fox, um, so I'm not going to reveal who they are, but uh, emailed me and said, said that was hilarious and I remember that too. I actually saw the video. <laughs> so there is video somewhere in the Fox News vault that shows this you know, meatloaf incident. I, I wish someone would dig it out and, and leak it. <laughs> I wish there were another mole that would uh, dig out the video and leak it. You talked in some detail in the book about the Andrea Macris uh, sexual harassment suit against Bill and she eventually settled. 
Now, what was like life with him as all of this happened? And it, for some reason, why did it all feel like an episode of Frasier, where everyone then had to take these workplace gender sensitivity courses? Uh, well, I was not at the time of that lawsuit. I was not working for Bill yet, but I was. I was at Fox. I was there, and the the uh, the atmosphere in the newsroom was like electric. The day, <laughs> the day it happened, there was a lot. There was a lot of Schadenfreude because B- Bill is not a beloved character at Fox. He sort of rubbed enough people the wrong way that you know there was a little bit of glee in the air <laughs> when he sort of got his his comeuppance. But he actually that first day walked through the newsroom. He, you know, because uh, he had to go sort of, I guess, visit with, was it, excuse me, visit with his staff at the time. And <laughs> the look on his face as he walked through the newsroom and the look on all the people who suddenly were very busy, like, you know, staring straight ahead at their computer screens and not looking at him. It was, it, it was pretty, it, it was a pretty weird time to be at Fox, especially since at that point I'd been there maybe, I'd been there less than a year at that point, I think, when that happened. Um, but they they settled that what you know whatever whatever it was they settled it real quickly and you know it rumor has it that she got a pretty nice chunk of change and a pretty powerful non disclosure agreement and and you've never heard from her again. And never. why would you? Yeah, why would you indeed? Um, last one. You you talk about the shock in the Fox newsroom when uh, then Senator Barack Obama surprised Hillary Clinton in the Iowa uh, um, caucus. And you say that no one in the newsroom saw it coming. What was it like in those days then trying to develop the narrative around that? It, it was funny to see everyone sort of at a loss because we didn't have a narrative on Obama right at the beginning. There was no narrative. He was a, he was a complete unknown. Uh, you know, we had the Hillary narrative, the Hillary narrative, oh, she's, you know, Bill Clinton cheats on her and she's a liar and whitewater and all that other garbage. That was the Hillary narrative. But, the, but there was no Obama narrative at the beginning. And I think that scared the crap out of a lot of people. Like, how are we going to fight this guy? And, you know, eventually uh, Reverend Wright was sort of delivered into everyone's laps. And that became, the oh, Obama's a radical, you know, black radical who hates America. You know, like that, that line sort of uh, became the party line on him. But... Obama is fascinating in that he defies a lot of characterization. You know, the the right to this very day wants to paint him as some sort of radical socialist who hates America. And people and the American public looks at looks at Obama, this sort of mild mannered, nice guy, and they're like, I don't I don't see it. I don't see it. That's that's why the narrative hasn't stuck stuck on them yet. 